Hey, Grace Church family. So great to see you today. It is day six today. We are almost a whole week into our prayer and fasting, and I just pray that you are experiencing God, that you are stepping into all that He has for you, that you're seeking Him like never before, and we're excited to hear your stories. We're excited to hear the testimonies of what God is doing in your life. And so if you want to share, you can even comment below. If you want to share what God has been doing in your life, maybe He's answered a prayer. Maybe He's given you direction in something. Share it with us or go online at gracechurch.life and click contact us. Share your testimonies with us. We love to celebrate what God is doing in your life. And we believe there are great things ahead. So if you haven't jumped in yet, it's not too late. Jump in and remove something from your life. Replace that with more of God and see what He does in your life. So today again is day six, and we're talking about facing temptation today. And so when I think about temptation, every single one of us faces that. We all have different temptations that we face and that we struggle with. And there's a passage in scripture that actually talks about temptation. And you may have actually heard this passage of scripture in a whole different way. You've probably heard of people say this phrase before, that God won't give you more than you can handle. And you've probably heard other Christians say that to you. Maybe even a, a pastor sometime or somebody who did a Bible study say that phrase to you. And so that is a common phrase in the Christian world that we hear. That phrase is actually not in scripture. Because when you say God won't give you more than you can handle, there's a bunch of things that are just not quite right with that phrase. First of all, God isn't the one that is giving you everything you're facing in your life. Sometimes we bring things on ourselves. And so it's not always true in that case. And that um, God actually wants us in a place of surrender. He wants us in a place of brokenness because it causes us to rely on Him even more. And so if you look through scripture, you actually will see that the people in the Bible and the people that were following God in, in these times, they actually faced things way harder than they could ever imagine facing. And in the midst of that, God shows up. And so it's in those moments of temptation that I believe we have the opportunity to rely on God even more than we ever have. And so I'm going to share that passage with you that often gets misquoted. It's in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. In verse 13, it says, The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you can endure. And so if you read that, it's saying something way different than God won't give you more than you can handle. Basically, it's telling us, hey, there's going to be temptation. You're going to face it. And it's going to be hard. And it's going to be a lot. But God is faithful, so He's with you in the middle of it, and that He is going to give you a way out of that. And so He's with us, and He wants to show us what to do in the middle of it, as long as we are seeking Him and turning to Him in the middle of the temptation. I know another thing I love to do when I think about things that I'm facing in my life is I like to to see, okay, well, did Jesus face that? And if so, how did he handle that when he was living on the earth, right? And so Jesus himself was tempted straight from the devil in scripture. And so let's take a look to see how Jesus handled that temptation. So if you remember the story, it's in Matthew chapter four, where Jesus goes out into the wilderness, right? And he's in the wilderness for 40 days. And in fact, he is fasting and he is praying, right? This is his time of solitude. He's alone and he's in the wilderness and the devil comes straight at him and tempts him. Not once, not twice, but three times, right? He is tempted from the enemy. And so how does Jesus respond to temptation? I want to explain what he does. So um, the three times he's tempted, right? The devil comes at him with a question, right? And how does Jesus respond 
to that. Uh, the first time in chapter four, Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say. And so what's the response to temptation? The response is God's word. It's no, this is what God's word says. No, this is what I should be doing according to God's word. Because again, the devil came at him a second time. Going to chapter seven, Jesus responded, the scriptures also say. And so each time the devil tempted him, his response is God's word. This is what we need to face temptation. Again, the third time the devil comes at him in verse 10, get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him, for the scriptures say. So he kept referring to God's word. God's word was all that he needed to overcome the temptation from the devil. And so we have what we need when we are facing temptation. God has given us the gift of his word. And so if you don't know scripture, if you don't have scripture memorized, if, if you have certain things you're facing in your life, I want to encourage you today, get in God's word, find a scripture in God's word that is related to what you're facing and, and memorize it and hold on to it so that when the enemy comes at you in that area to tempt you, you can tell him, wait a minute, the scripture says right? And so we've got to have God's word ready to face those temptations. And as we wrap up day six, I also just want to encourage you. There was a time in Paul's life where he was struggling and he was struggling with something very difficult in his life. And so he brought that to the Lord. And I just want to encourage you with that scripture as well uh, before, before we close out today. And um, here's Paul saying in, in chapter 8, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 8, he says, Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. And so I want to say to you that His grace is sufficient for you. His power is made perfect in your weakness. And when you are weak, then you are strong in God. And so could it be that these temptations that we face are opportunities and times that we can press into God even more than we have before so that we can be relying on His power and not our power? because this isn't supposed to be about what we can do. This is about what God can do in and through us. And so I would say that these times of temptation are great opportunities for us to become stronger in God and to use His word that He's given to us to face those things. So I wanna encourage you with that today. And so let's pray as we wrap up day six. God, we come before you and we just worship you. We seek you right now in this moment, God, wherever, wherever we're watching from, God, we're gathered together in your name and we're praying and we're seeking you, God. And we thank you for this time of fasting, God, that we're drawing near to you more and more like never before, God, that we're removing things in our life that are distractions, that we're focusing fully on you, God. And we're, we're allowing you to do something in our life, God, a deeper work, um, God, that you've never done in our life before, God, that we would have more reliance on you, God, that, that we would know more of your scripture, that we would learn more about you and live it out in our life, God. So we thank you for this time of prayer and fasting, God. And today, as we focus on temptations that we face, God, I just thank you. I thank you for your word, God, because your word is the answer to these temptations, just as Jesus showed us when he was on the earth, God, and he was being tempted by the devil, his response was your word. And that was all that he needed to have victory in those temptations, God. And so we thank you that we have the gift of your word. I pray that we would dive into it more, God, that we would rely on your word, that we would have your word so hidden in our heart, God, that we might not sin against you, that we might not fall into temptation, God. I just pray that we would, uh, God, use your word daily 
and, and that we would be drawn more into you, God, and that through our weaknesses, God, we would see your strength rise up within us. And God, that we would know it's actually okay to be weak because it does create more reliance on you. So God, we just lean into that. We press into that. And God, we thank you that your grace is sufficient for us in each and every day, in each and every moment. And we thank you so much. And we look to you. And we give you all the glory and the praise for all that you're doing in our lives in this time. And we just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks so much for tuning in with us today on day six. Again, if you haven't started, it's not too late. So just jump on in.